Yo, welcome to another episode of Fun Wit Dumb. Today, I'm joined by a friend of mine who is a comedian. Uh, uh, what else do you do? Write, writer? Uh, nah, are you a personality? Nah, nah. You're just it. a comedian. I'm <laughs> fucking, that's it. That's it. Everything I do is to lead up to that stage. That right. is it. He is a stand-up comedian um, that I've met many years ago. We ended up at an odd job where we were co-hosts on oh, a shit. K-pop uh, uh just pop culture show like where you talk about k-pop and stuff and we were like the funny guy next to the guy who's actually knowledgeable about Danny k-pop. from la yeah um and we we were uh you were his partner for a while and then i replaced you yep. and then the show got canceled <laughs> the show got, i mean the show was getting canceled yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean i love doing it i loved uh danny m yeah because i didn't know shit about k-pop and that was my whole shtick Right. I was the ugly American who do nothing. Well, I didn't know. I mean, to be fair, I didn't know much about K-pop. You really didn't know about it. I K-pop. didn't know anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and at least you came from the music world. Yeah. I mean, you're a rapper, but I was just, you know, they took a chance. Right. I remember the producer, Andy, yeah. really liked me. I mean, and you know, I, the the videos are are visually pleasing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So there's nothing wrong with what, wanting to watch them. I mean, you go to... These Korean barbecue restaurants, they're blasting. It's like uh, Korean barbecue restaurants are so intense because you got the meat grilling. It's hot. It's smoky. All of a sudden, you have all the K-pop visuals on 20 TV surrounding you. That, it's like you're on acid. That, you know? That's that's heaven. Yeah, that people. That's why people love it. That's why people love people it. People love it. Yeah, I love I eat. I eat me, me and Lauren go, you know, my yeah. girlfriend's white. And she never had Korean barbecue till we started dating. And that's not your first white girlfriend. You've dated white girls. I only life. date white girls. <laughs> only dated white I've girls. I've only ever dated. I dated a half Mexican uh, for a while when I first moved to L.A. Right. Uh, but she was half white. She looked white. She Just was, to clarify, you are adopted. Um, and you were adopted as a baby? I was not. I uh, was adopted. I'm adopted by white people. Yeah. And I grew up in Pennsylvania. Right. And I mentioned that earlier in Bethlehem. And uh, how old th- were you? I thought we thought we thought. Yeah, I was seven. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't. How old were you? I was actually five, and I didn't find that out till off 30. by two years. By two years, year and a half. <laughs> right, year and right, a half. Right, okay. But uh, I'm celebrating this weekend. Nice. Yeah. Uh, by the way, he'll be on my show. Can I say that? Do you care? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try. I want to put this maybe out tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, uh, I was supposed to put something out today. I, I slacked. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm behind three episodes. Yeah, yeah. But mine are only 20 minutes and by myself, so I shouldn't right, right. be fucking behind. I uh, So I, I I didn't find out I was two years younger till my 30th birthday. I wow. went to Korea with a friend of ours, uh, PK. Right. He's another comedian. And I, found, I the orphanage set it up. You did the biological tr- mom trek to find yeah, your mom. Yeah, but I didn't, though. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is where I feel uh, kind of bad for other Koreans who are adopted because I know so many who try, right, and never find. Mm-hmm. And and and, and, and and you know, mine was one phone call, right. Like I wasn't planning to do it. PK said, "Let's go to Korea," and I, I was broke, <laughs> I was broke, you know. And at the time, and my mom was like, "Why well, not?" My white mom, yeah, said, "I'll pay for it." But make sure you try to find your father because he wrote you a letter. Oh, wow. Yes. And what was the le- letter like? Just How's know. it going? Okay. I hope you're doing well. And this was way later. Like, you're grown. This was grown. a couple years ago, like, right? Or no? No, I'm 41 now. Oh, so this was a while ago. This is like over 10, 12 oh, okay, years okay, ago. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, But late 20s, early 30s or something like that? Late 20s. Late 20s. Okay. Well, I got the letter in my... Uh, I had several letter, letters right. like between my mid to late twenties, but you know what are you gonna do? I don't. I'm like so far removed from that. Right. Believe it or not, uh, not all not all adopted kids uh, uh, have that uh, yearning right. to find out. I, I would say a lot of adopted kids are fucked up. Yeah. I think there's no, definitely I, I, some I, issues. I, I but believe that. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, it, it makes sense that not all of them would have the yearning to find them. Well, know? my sister, my sister, who's white, adopted two black girls from St. Kitts, some island uh, past Puerto Rico. And the first one they adopted was a baby. Right. Uh, no, no issues. But the other one, she was older, like 10. Yeah. 
had a hard time with it. It's a mm. big transition. So she later on, as she got older, she went back and visited St. Kitts, hung out with the mother. And I think there was some closure there. Right. And I think really she saw like, oh, man, they're poor. I don't want to live like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to live like this. I don't know if that was really what it is. Right, I'm right, sure right, there was right. some closure. I, I don't. I didn't really ask. They, you know, if my nieces want to divulge stuff to me, they can. But I don't really ask. But uh, so, uh, I thought I was seven. Mm-hmm. My white mom said go over. So I made a phone call, and this is two days before the trip. I got a call back in four hours. Oh wow! That's insane. That's wow. almost unheard of right, when it right, comes right, right. to uh, you know finding your parents. And so stuff. for a, your dad. Or mom, mom. I didn't. You know what's crazy? We didn't. We thought my mom had passed. Right. Cause uh, you know, you probably know this better than I. How is it now having kids out of wedlock over in Korea? Is it the same? Uh, I don't know exactly if that's gotten better, but I know when I, it wasn't good. You know, it yeah. wasn't a good thing. I mean, that was a point. huge yeah. thing. Right. So that's what happened. My mom. It's had probably me. still not good, to be honest. Probably, yeah. Okay. That. You know what? I. You know. I'm I'm kind of uh, for and against it because right. I kind of like the idea of having two f- parents around. Right, right. I mean, a lot, it doesn't happen as much here. I mean, it would be nice. It but would it be nice. It doesn't a lot. happen a lot. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so uh, I didn't know my mom was alive. So then when I got a call, we were shocked, both me and my white mom. Right, because your dad <laughs> wrote the letter, right? My dad wrote the letter, and I did find this out. He was the one put me up for adoption, without telling. My oh, mom. wow. Yeah. That's wild. So uh, I went over. I didn't know this at all. So I go over. Me and PK go go in. Oh, man, we were hungover because we were celebrating my 30th birthday right. the night before. And we go in. And I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be like uh, fuck Jerry Springer. Yeah. Or like one of those like daytime that, that's shows. That's kind of a terrible. Connect- terrible way to spend your hungover this <laughs> yeah but like i was ha- i was excited right 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 i was so excited but i was also like I'm, you know what's funny i i'm 30 and i'm still a bit immature i think comedians are right all oh, you we deal with different things by you know drinking or venting on stage or singing or whatever mm-hmm. so we go in it's all in film pk's recording the whole thing i see her this is the craziest thing. I knew immediately she was my mom. Wow. Immediately. Well, there what, was what was the that, a trait? One, we looked <laughs> just alike. Oh, really? Oh, wow, that's amazing. It looked like me with a wig. That is amazing. <laughs> I did, I kid her. I said, it's like me. It's like, I look like uh, I look, it was me with a uh, a wig. I was like, man, I'm an ugly woman. And, and, she, and she probably felt the same when she saw you. Oh, she, she, was like, she just started crying. Wow. Just It was like. Yeah. It, it was, was it was kismic. Right. It was everything you see in movies and that that corny uh you know connection when like oh like they haven't seen right. each other. It was that. That must be so crazy though cuz the language oh. barrier, you know, it's like we didn't yeah. have to say a word. Yeah. That's was that's what's crazy. Didn't say anything, just hugged each other. Well, she started crying. Wow. She started crying like crazy. She was like shaking and just touching me. And I was like, get the fuck. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. No, no, I, I like, didn't say that. I didn't you say are that. a cold man. <laughs> no, no. no I, I, PK is like crying too. Yeah. But I, I'm i not much of a crier. I think, right. you know, there's a lot. Probably has a lot to do with my Yeah, father. I got some issues too. I, I can't. I'm not much of a I'll crier. I'll cry about myself when I watch like. Uh, I'll cry over some dumb shit. Like That's Major League. <laughs> yeah. Like I watch I, sports movies. I th- always say that like I can't get emotional with like family and stuff. But like I'll be on the plane and I'll watch the dumbest <laughs> movie. <laughs> and I'm bawling, dude. I'm bawling my eyes out. It's the plane. It's is the it, plane is it effect. The altitude or something? It's the plane or effect. Because most of the time we travel, we're drinking. Right. We get in this container full of oxygen. Mm. We're 40,000 feet in the air. Our brain's a little light. Right. And every movie you watch on a plane is amazing, isn't it? Right. Because you're trapped. So you're stuck. You don't, you're not on your phone. Dude, I, I think that's what it is. You're not distracted by any other thing. Well, this we, is even before phones. Yeah. I, do, I started crying. This is hilarious. Coming back from Hong Kong mm-hmm. for doing the Danny from LA show. 
I'm watching the Katy Perry documentary movie. Right. And she's upset because her and Russell Brand. I'm like, get, I'm like, come on. <laughs> I was like, fuck. And then I didn't want any of the crew to see me. Right, right. So I was just like this. Oh, oh my God. And I did the yawn. I was like, <sighs> that's a little, that's fucking hilarious, yeah. bro. So I think that's that's a guy trait. And I'm, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll get back to the story, but I'm so fucking sick of society and everyone going, it's all right for men to cry. Yeah, when your daughter dies. Right. Or your puppy gets shot. Yeah, yeah. But not all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's annoying. Right. It's I, I don't even like when women cry all the time. Right. Let alone fucking men. And mm-hmm. yes, I am putting men to a different standard. It's like, you should be a rock at I mean, some point. It's emotionally draining, I feel like. Yeah. You know? Crying? It's stressful. Yes. And you look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> You're all wet. Right, right, right. But anyway, so we, I go back. She's shaking. We're talking. I mean, I, I I don't even know how, you know, it's like, um, oh, you, you ever get like a phone call and you already know what the, it was going to be like, or, uh, uh, or, uh, or like deja vu, mm-hmm. all that weird yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. six sense shit. Right. That's what it was like when I met my mom. Right. Uh, there was no anger. People always ask that. They go, were you mad? I'm like, no. Mm. No, and this is before I even knew that she had no say in the adoption process. Right. So we're sitting there, we're recording. PK is translating, yeah. which is a trip, right? Yeah. And we're just talking, and then I go, "Oh, oh, it's my birthday! I actually met her February 9th, Uh, what is it? Two thousand nineteen. So it would be like two thousand. What's told you? Like two thousand seven. When's your birthday? My American birthday is February 9th of oh, 70- I'm February 18th. I'm yeah. Aquarius. But my real yeah. birthday is oh. actually August 18th. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, of 77. So it was way off. Way off. That's so crazy. Way off. So, so I go- reading Aquarius signs yeah. the whole time. Yeah, all that shit. Right? <laughs> I remember my uh, other adopted sister who's Korean. Yeah. She was like, Kevin, you're so cool because you're an Aquarius. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't care. Right, 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 right. So, uh, <laughs> so I'll, we go, oh, it's my birthday. I'm 30. She goes, no. She just goes, she gives me that weird look. And go, no, you're 28. Yeah. You know, she'll yeah. be like, what? And you're like, your birthday's August 18th That's of so 77. Crazy. And we, and BK and I, and we all in the room go, no. And she, and her reply was, I would know when I gave birth to you. Right. And I was like, oh, you're right. Isn't that amazing? And so we had to do the math and everything. We're like, oh, my God, she's actually right. So that was a trip. And then I so found out how, was fun. Do you celebrate the new birthday now? I celebrate both. That's what we're That's what we're doing this weekend. So that so you celebrate both. I s- fuck yeah, I celebrate <laughs> both. So you have two birthdays. Of course. Your adopted birthday and your biological birthday. Of course. That's amazing. We always, I always do something for both. This one I'm doing a little bigger. We got a party bus. It's yeah. Picking us up Friday, taking us to the show. If you're getting this before Friday, I'm at the Ice House headlining. Mr. Jonathan Park is doing a guest spot. I've been doing some stand up, and, uh, you know, some of my comedian friends have been giving me slots to perform. Yep. And uh, this is another situation. Um, but so you got two birthdays, like an asshole. And, uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that chick. You know that annoying chick that celebrates the whole month? Yeah, birthday it's month. It's my birthday month. I was like, no, it's not. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, no. But I. I don't really get crazy about it. I did get crazy uh, for my uh, Amer- real birthday for a while. But then, so we were talking. So we find out why the adoption. Got to ask. Yeah. Why the adoption? I'm not angry. Uh, mom. Right. Mom won. Mm-hmm. So mom won. Why'd you put me up for adoption? She goes, oh, well, out of wedlock. Uh, poor. Right. Poor. That's what she said. Yeah, so. poor. Yeah. Apparently, back in the late seventies, early Korea oh, yeah. was not flourishing. Oh, yeah. It's like the fastest developing country. Yeah, because we're we're because out of the war, and then there yeah. was. If I took my mom back to Korea right now, because she hasn't returned, she'd be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, it's like New York City. <laughs> she'd, yeah, she'd yeah. be like tripping out. So we, uh, she's like, so my grandma raised me for yeah. a little bit. I got to meet her at that trip. Not kidding you. She looks. She, just like another older version. No, she looks like Kim Jong-il. Not <laughs> Un, but Il. The original one. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. original. 
the original one. So here's what got me. I said, oh, she raised me for a little bit. Then my mom took me back. But they were just too poor. They were just struggling. Right. So they have these orphanages. There's a Korean name for them. I wish I, I remembered. But you can drop your kid off and come back. Right. So when you get, do a little better, so that it's like it's basically like a more permanent daycare center. That that's crazy. So you can actually come back. Come back. Yeah. And and I remember go, visiting the orphanage. You could put your kid on layaway. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and yep then come back. Come back. Okay. So uh, this is in the countryside, nowhere near the city limits. I mean, country. So you know when you go out there, you when you drive to the country, you see signs for like dog. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's like. Right. So. I remember that. I remember going to the orphanage, and I that's what came back to me. So anyway, we went there. My father found out and said, I'm, my son is not going to be in the orphanage. Right. So he got me out. And I remember him being uh, not abusive, but definitely uh, old school dad who yelled. Even as a little kid, I remember so that. So wait, how old was this? Happening? This is when I was like five. Five years old. Wow. So, so he took me, and I remember – being in like an apartment building yeah. near a ri- river. Yeah. I, that's all I remember. It's all coming back it's to you. It's all a little yeah. bit. And then I just remember the process and then being at like uh, a hospital, getting shots, and then getting on a plane. That's so crazy. It's crazy. Five years old. That's, that's not a baby. You're, you're starting yeah. to get some memories. Yeah. So I remember that. And then so I ask my uh, mom one, I go, what about the dad? And, and she told PK... Not to tell me, of course he's gonna tell me. Right. But she said, "Oh, in Korea, it's like, oh, I'm scared of him. He was abusive, kind of thing." So the, if that is true, kind of thing, you it would make sense. The the whole scenario that right. he took me without parent, and plus that's money. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, however much money they get paid. I mean, this is in 1981 that I was adopted. Uh, my white parents. Pay like close to thirty five thousand dollars or something. Right, that's not cheap. So, whatever much money they gave to the parents, so I think that's that was an issue, and I think maybe, uh, you know, later on, my father had like uh, seller's remorse mm, <laughs> kind mm, of thing. Yeah. But then, what's weird is the orphanages, the adoption agency, reached reach out to him and the mom, and right. he she was the only one that called. But it was a great time. And then I got to go back two two years later to perform, right? Yeah, yeah. That's for cool. uh, all the three major, Holt was one of them. I can't remember the other yeah. two, and it was all a bunch of adopted Koreans from all over the country, right? And I got to perform. Amy Anderson did it once. She's yeah. a comedian. Yeah. Let me just tell you, I ate shit. <laughs> it oh, is like not- you bombed or what? Oh, I bombed, wow. and my mom was there with my half brother. Yeah, why, why do you finally, think you bombed, though? Uh, translation. A lot okay. of them were Korean-speaking. Right. Uh, a lot of them were European, believe it or not. Okay. Brightly lit. Yeah. In a big conference room and full of round tables eating. That's not conducive for comedy. Right. Especially my type of comedy. And I'm a much better comic now, but, you know, I was more rigid back then. Like, I had this, I had my act, and I'm right. going to do boom, 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 boom. Uh, Man, I ate it. That's <laughs> and hilarious. I teased the older yeah. guy from one of the agencies. Apparently, that's a no-no. You never make yeah. fun of older people. Right, right, right. I'm like, I don't fucking know. It's like, and you know what? Fuck you. Like, <laughs> I, you're, you're your people abandoned me. Right, right, And right. I'm supposed to know your shit-ass rules. That's amazing. You know? And I just ate it. But the lead guy was so cool. Yeah. He was like, um, he's like the cool middle-aged Korean guy who's like the hip lawyer. Right. He was really cool about it. All the American speaking uh, adoptees were great, and some of the stories, man, is nuts. Mm. How long they've been looking, right? And I felt bad, and you know, as and my mom, who you're like four no, hours. <laughs> yeah, my mom who speaks no English is just right. clapping at me, eating it. <laughs> that is yeah, so amazing. Yeah, and I have a half brother who's like six feet tall. Right, and this is. Uh, Back in, you know, uh, 2000s, whatever, eight, we're just talking. Very little English. You'll get yeah. a trip out of this. And he goes, what kind of music do you like? I go, oh, I like rap. Mm-hmm. And he goes, 
I go, cool. I was like, who, who, you like rap? He goes, I love rap. This is 2000, like 70. I'm like, who do you like? He goes, Warden G. I'm like, <laughs> what the? F-? That's fucking tight. I mean, how long does the music, like, is it literally shipped? Right, right, right. How long like, does it on, take? On a canoe? Right, right. Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, But cool. that's even an interesting name to say, Warren, Warren G. G. Yeah. yeah. Warren G. Warren G. Warren G. Uh, yeah, it, it sounds kind of like a Korean name, actually. <laughs> but there was, uh, and then after that, I um, have not kept in touch. That, that's the question people always ask. Oh, so you haven't kept I in have touch. I have not kept okay. in touch. I think it, when I go back and maybe visit Danny, chill, I might try. It's it's a little bit tough to keep in touch as you get a little older, too. You get older, plus her English was bad in yeah. the translation. She bought, she was so sweet. She bought gifts for myself, uh, but she bought gifts for my white mom. Yeah. And put a note down and everything. I think she just needed to see that you were okay. Yes, yes. You're that like, was very important. You're good. Okay. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> She here's the here here's crazy. Uh, she her husband yeah, her first husband mm-hmm. does not know that she had a child. Oh wow! But her son and her have a connection that they know each other because she wanted him to meet me. Mm-hmm. So they have a secret. Right? Isn't that crazy? Right. And I'm not trying to sound gross, <laughs> but my mom, mom one must have a good body. To not know, like I've been with pregnant uh, right, right. single mothers, you know. Right, right. You know. Uh, I mean, but I, you know, I've never been with a Asian or Korean mom, so I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I guess you know what? Maybe I have been at the massage places, <laughs> but you know what? But I'm not focusing right, right, right. a lot on their body. How was how was your experience in just Korea in general? Like when you went. I mean, I besides it. the family stuff, did you like it? Yeah. First, was uh, it a trip just to see like a bunch of just Koreans people just like you in general? Like, do you get this? You have to get this because you're very American. I, like, I, I you're, am. You're yeah, very yeah. style stylish, but you also have a very sense of American in you. Do I you, am, even though I'm from Koreatown. I still am pretty. Uh, w- when you go over, <laughs> when I went to Korea, old people would come up to me. Yeah. And. uh I, I remember this specifically it would touch me on the face. Yeah. Yeah. Just randomly and go handsome. Nice. Handsome. Yeah. And, yeah. and then uh, one lady, she said something and I said something and she laughed and she goes, You smell like butter. Butter? <laughs> yeah. And I guess that's an American trait. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Oh, cool. But it's very obvious, I think, the way I carry myself, yeah. the way I talk, especially if I start talking, they just know. Yeah. They know, but everyone was really nice. Mm. And granted, I haven't been back in like did 10 you, years. Did you like the girls or anything? Man, that that was a trip to me. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, I grew up in Pennsylvania. And so, if you're an Asian person mm-hmm. that grows up in a white area. Well, well, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Okay. And, th- and I'm not even just talking about Ohio. Mm-hmm. I knew guys who are very Korean families, but they grew up in a very white area. You're, and you grow up with white friends. You're trying to assimilate. And I find myself not being attracted to Asian girls at all. Right. Because I, I grew up with white people, so I was attracted to white girls. A lot more Puerto Rican girls, actually. Were there not the, that many Asian girls there in, in, in your town? No. No? Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I can honestly say there was me and my brother. Wow. And maybe two others. Right. Yeah, that's it. Right. And I went to a, my high school had three thousand people too. Yeah, y'all, you got you four didn't hang out with each other. <laughs> the Asians. No, I, I I I yeah. didn't even hang out with my brother. Right, right, yeah. right. Oh, oh, wait. You know what? There was another Asian guy in our fucking homeroom adopted. Right. Yeah. So yeah, all kind of and same stories. Same yep. Yeah. Uh, always, always children of uh vets, mm. Korean War vets. Mm. Yep, it's a thing. So I guess like if you go and kill them, you feel like you have to give and take kind of thing. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll take one in. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to give back. You know, right, like right, right. when you cut down a tree, you plant two. You know what I mean? <laughs> you kill you kill three goose, you got to buy one. <laughs> but here's the thing. So I didn't – I've never hung out with that many Asians. Yeah. We had a lady. Her name was Kwan, friend of the family, and she gave us kimchi. Yeah. And like all that stuff. It was great to have that because we just didn't get much of that at all. Right. 
So then after college, I moved to San Francisco. So here's what comes the bizarro shit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just around all Asians. Not like Koreans in San Francisco. Right. More Filipinos, like Chinese. Chinese. Yep. Do you know how much shit I got for not being Asian enough? Right. And it's like, God damn, I'm not I'm not white enough in Pennsylvania. I'm not Asian right, enough in San right. Francisco. And I could have picked a more Asian place, yeah. San Francisco. Which The Asian Americans are very tough on Asians that might have grew up with a lot of white people yes. or whatnot. But uh, it wasn't that big a deal because I'm a grown I was a grown right, man. Right. I had my job. But college is where People get these kids get militant about it. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah. Well, because you know, I played a lot of these college shows, okay. these Asian student orgs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but you'll also even have like Asian kids who grew up with white kids that all of a sudden is like Asian pride, extra hard. You know yeah, what I mean? You know what? I, that that's not college. That's not their fault because they're idiots. College right, right. kids are idiots. Right, right, right. <laughs> they're so smart. No, but they're excited. That's all it is. Yeah. They're very excited yeah, about this new experience. But I baby. think a lot of them are idealistic. Right, right, they right. don't realize uh, the give and take mm-hmm. of real life. Uh, <laughs> I sound like such an asshole there, but <laughs> I, what I did a pre it wasn't the dudes. No dudes gave me shit. It was all the fucking like Asian chicks. Right. And then I started date a couple. That's where it got to be a, a fucking pain in the ass. They would harass me about not knowing certain foods and this and did you did you did you would you know this with dating uh Asian girls in general? They they get bossy real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, wait, you're not my mom. <laughs> like they would try to like boss so you me think around. Asian girls are really bossy. The ones I've dated. Yeah. Not, I don't know about overall, right, right, right. but the ones I've dated for sure. So I dated them and then I just got used to it. And then, but then as I started doing comedy, I met more Asians in comedy. Yeah. And they were like cool. Cause right. then they, they were like trying to introduce, introduce me to things. Right. And then I started getting a little more success, which helps. Yeah. But then I built, uh, you know, a small Asian following, which helps. But I mean, it's, it, I'm like a weird, like that, that, that cliche fish out of water. Right. Right. You know, and then now all my girlfriends have been white. Yeah, and then I had one chick. Uh, what the one I first moved down? It's always so funny because she thinks they always the ones who have an Asian fetish. Right, 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 right. Those are the ones that always <laughs> fuck me up because they always try to tell me what they know about. Like, hey, I know about uh, bulgogi. You I, see, uh, to me, it's like no matter how hot you are, like non Asian girl, but you're into asian shit like a yeah. korean guy and they're like they have a little bit of a fetish yeah i i can't I, i'm not into it it's at like all. annoying it's not hot it's, it's like, annoying it's like yeah it's annoying and it's just not attractive to me you know and, and i and i want to go them i was like are you gonna take off your shirt i i don't <laughs> i don't care i don't care I, let me ask you this about like when you do stand up you know i feel like asian audiences you know it's gotten better but asian audiences have had a hard time like enjoying stand-up comedy in a way for like those it's been a process in a way because well, i don't know if it's like coming from a certain culture that, you know i will say i did get a lot of love from doing the kims of comedy right and this was a long time ago long time kims ago. of comedy was like an asian lineup kind of uh, a parody off of kings of comedy yeah um, but it was you and uh, who else was it? It was you. By the way, you sound very uh, interviewing, <laughs> like fucking uh, the guy with the beard. Uh, he interviews in like uh, at uh, at fucking Pace University in New York. Oh yeah, behind yeah, the actor yeah. studio. Behind the actor studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way you're explaining it's amazing <laughs> yeah. to me. I was like, where the hell did you get that? Voice? Well, I just I just want to you know. I get it. When get we it. reference things that people may not know. Well, about, Kim's you know? a comedy is uh, an Asian group. It it was a huge help for me. It was myself, Bobby Lee, mm-hmm. C. Byrne, and Dr. Ken. Wow. And Ken Jung and all of them. <laughs> <laughs> went out to get TV shows. Well, right. Bobby already had one. I'm the only one who never got a TV show. So I'm like fucking. How do I? I'm like the Bill Ingvall. Yeah. Of the uh, of the fucking group. So yeah. just doing stand up. And now Bill Ingvall has a show. I You're guess like I Bernie, show. but didn't die. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're still alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but Bernie was a monster. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a huge help for me, and it's weird because. I was by far the youngest. Mm. They've all been doing comedy at least ten years. Right. 
they've known each other for at least five. But was it because at the time there weren't even that many Asian comedians maybe? They well, like, you know what? I was four years into it. Mm -hmm. I did Kimmel and I did Montreal. I got I, I was very fortunate. Right. Because I was fucking good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got I mean, fuck it. Say it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Dan Gabriel, coming from San Francisco, yeah. uh, I got a television show called Asia Street Comedy, mm -hmm. which was used to be MNET. And then oh, wow. whatever that network changed yeah, yeah, to yeah. MNET. And so they were filming uh, like eight episodes in one weekend. So they wanted four comedians. So they were taped. So those were the four. Right. I didn't know any of them. I didn't know any of them. But then they watched me. I think Steve and Ken had watched me. And they're like, oh, who's this kid? He's got a little. Let's add. I get a call from my manager. They're like, hey, you want to do this? It's like, sure. Yeah. Hey, sure. And I was cocky. I'm still fucking cocky. Yeah. But I was definitely the most aloof guy because I didn't know them. And if you're young and they're yeah, you know, when you're young, yeah. yeah, you're young, you're arrogant. You think you got a little heat on you, right? And uh, you know, I did my own thing, right? And uh, I, I think a little bit, and I don't know to this day what they really thought, but I think they had that air of like, why is this kid not treating us better? Mm. Yeah, yeah. But I was always. The, I was always friendly, yeah, but cordial. But like, I wasn't like at all, right? You know, the guys I looked at, uh, looked up to, were like, you know, of course Eddie Murphy, and then uh, like I. Did, this was interesting. I didn't look to Asian comics, right? For a well, there weren't many. There weren't many. Yeah, and my whole thing was like, funny is funny, right? Don't doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Like nowadays, it's different. Like now, the irony of comedy now, you get more pigeonholed now. Because there's so many avenues and outlets. Right. So you, you can just be like uh, alt comic or like you do a black comic or like you're a hipster well, that But that helps you focus in on how you make your money, I feel like. Because when things – there's a lot of art forms that's very – obviously it's yeah. vague. But it's easier when you hone in on an audience, you know? Yeah, but uh, I get that. I'm not I, saying it's better. I'm I just saying no, it, I get it, that. it helps, you know what but I mean? But for, for comedy, for me, it was never trying to – Right, right, Garner right. and Asian. I, yeah. I wanted to be a good comic that was Korean. Right, right. Yeah. So then we made the DVD. It actually, I couldn't believe how much recognition I got from it. Right. And people, Did you get Asian cred? I, I guess. You got, you got I the guess. Asian it was street great. cred. Yeah. It, it was, uh, what was funny is then people would talk about, why why'd you guys break up? I'm like, we didn't really break up. <laughs> I, was like, I mean, it's a special. There's nothing to break they, up they, or Well, not. we did it's like four shows together. Right. And people were like, why'd you break up? And then uh, Steve's, Steve's cool. But he's more of a businessman to me. Right. So I didn't really uh, connect with Steve that much. Uh, I connected with Ken. Right. Obviously, uh, you know that. You still do stuff with yeah, Ken. Yeah, me and Ken are real tight. You like, you like open up for I Ken open up yet. for Ken on the road. Right. I, I mean, I just, you know what's crazy? Because none of us were as big as Bobby back in the day. Like, he would right. make all the money. And was this because of Mad TV? Yeah, or? Mad TV. He was right. by far the biggest. And then you had us three. And then I just got close with Ken. I don't right. know what it is. I don't know if we have, like, same kind of, like, uh, ideas and stuff. Well, Ken is a very nice guy. He's a very nice yeah, guy. Everyone kind of gets along and, with and him. And we have a kind of, yeah. we you know, believe it or not, I'm kind of an introvert. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like you see me out at Cafe Blue. Like, when I drink, I was like, eh, I kind of want to be left alone. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right. I get, like, a couple guys I know, and that that's pretty much it. For sure. I mean, I don't go to Cafe Blue to socialize. No, no, you're there like, to drink. I can go drink yeah, alone yeah, if drink I want to. Yeah, yeah, that's the best part about it. Love that place. By the way, I hope we didn't blow up that spot. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've named my last album Cafe oh, Blue. Oh, you did? So okay. I, and it still didn't blow up. So. <laughs> <laughs> it shows so, you how many people listen to it. So right. then uh, Bobby and I had like a tiff, mm -hmm. which is odd because like I I didn't forgot about it. Like right. we haven't done the Kims. Dude, they're doing TV. I'm fucking just trying to pay my rent. Right. So re uh, recently, I have to mention this because I'm getting like comments on my YouTube and my thing like, why are you, are you the guy who pushed Bobby? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right. Like, what are you talking about? So I had to look it up. Apparently, he's telling people that at a photo shoot, I knocked him on the ground for no reason. Uh, Bobby. Yeah, which 
is fucking insane. You, you uh, at a photo shoot? What at a photo okay, shoot. Okay, so like like you guys both had a photo shoot or something? We were fo- doing the cover for Kim's a Comedy. Oh, okay, okay. So, so I'm the, the young story. guy, right? I wanted to know about the story, actually, because I don't know exactly. Yeah, like story. apparently someone, I didn't even know about it. I'm like, why, is, why does he even care? He's a fucking way bigger right. act than me. So then he uh, he's saying that I went in and just pushed him to the ground. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. Nah, that's just that's just fucking ridiculous. That's so just, what is the story? So I'm there. I'm the newbie. Right. They all know each other. We're at uh, New Wave Entertainment. It was Barry Katz's uh, management company. Mm-hmm. We're in the studio. We got to set up like this. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck. Is. It's like my fo- first photo shoot right. for a DVD. I'm like asking a bunch of questions. And then out of nowhere, fucking Bobby says, no, that's not fucking it, stupid. And he fucking smacks me in the back of my head. Right, like so jokingly, I, or what was it? It was just kind of. It was not. It was aggressive. It was aggressive yeah. enough to me to lose my fucking shit. Right. So I got mad. So I pushed him to the fucking ground. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Right. To this day, he so still is that why he you still guys, doesn't. So is that why you guys kind of uh, had a falling out, you two? Well, not really. Right. Because I still did the tour. I still would hang out with him. Right. It was a moment. People lose their fucking shit when you get hit in the head. Right. By the way, I don't know how this is in Korean culture, but if I'm joking with you and then I say, don't be stupid and then hit you in the back of the head, that's not cool. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you know what's crazy? In black culture, you never right. would do that. Right, 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 right. So I grew up in a culture where it's like, you know, I guess my dad was a cop. He right. was a war vet. He's like, hey, don't, don't fucking let anyone touch you right, in the head right. like that so i whatever time passes it was an awkward moment it was fucking hilarious yeah, yeah. <laughs> the entire photo shoot got quiet right and i'm sitting there like so we're we gonna do this or what <laughs> yeah. you know what, I mean? what are you gonna do okay. the moment's over who gives a shit yeah. he's not hurt i'm not hurt apparently his feelings were hurt <laughs> right 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 so then that's it and then all of a sudden i'm just hearing about it like now i was like dude that's just like 10 12 years ago Okay, so so till this day you hear about that and you guys. Well, I didn't. I just hear about it and then, you know, PK's like, "Why don't you guys get along?" I was like, "It's not about not getting along. We just don't see each PK other." PK did tell me a story that I don't know when this was, yeah. but you guys uh, ran into each other and he tried to like make things right between y'all. That's or weird. Did, yeah, and we're me and did we're PK, at the, PK did that, like, yeah we're at the laugh factory. He like parent trapped you guys. Yeah, like we're sitting there. It's like. Dude, we're we're waiting to get on fucking stage right. at the Laugh Factory. He takes us in the corner. He's like, "You guys should make up." And you guys, are like, dude, we're not. What do we? We're fine. Right. We don't need to make up. So I don't know. And they and they maybe so both after, of you guys weren't having it. Either one. No, of you guys we're not were having, having it. it. It's weird. It's yeah, yeah. first of all, no dude wants to be cornered and say you got to make up. Right. Like we're not dating. We're not fucking right. cousins. Right. We're not at a family reunion, but then I just hear all this stuff on my social media. I'm like, I don't even know what the fuck this is about. Right. Right. I'm like, did I get drunk one night <laughs> and just fucking throw him to the ground? And then right. so I had to hear about it. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not. The, that's not the way it happened. Yeah. Like I'm not. I'm a. I'm a fucking animal, but not. Right. I'm not just pushing. So you guys are just pretty much existing in the scene, not ever really. Re- revisiting this incident yeah i guess i guess i wasn't <laughs> right, you know right, it's right. like i don't it was like dude i have my own shit to worry about i'm worried about paying fucking cable right you right, know what right, i mean right, but right. that <laughs> so hey hey someone uh mentioned that uh he had mentioned it on i was like hey if i can get hits and i think it, if it'll get me <laughs> followers i'm all for it i'm all for it that's hilarious. I'm all for it. I don't give a fuck. This it. one incident fucking 10 plus years ago. Well, you know what? That's you know what? That's the thing is social media. This is society. And right. we talked about a little bit uh, last time we talked about, uh, about rap beefs. Right. People love it. There are People some infamous comedian it. beefs though, right? Well, I mean, you have the Joe Rogan, Carlos Mencia. Right. Like that that's was a, that's huge. That's a classic that one. Was I huge. totally forgot about that. Because yeah. was, it wasn't like, hey, we got an argument hey, don't fucking hit me in the head kind of thing. It was like going after what yeah. you do, what your, I mean, your, that was your viral, persona. And that your, was viral. Yeah, that's a know? thing. And this was like even 
when YouTube wasn't even super popping like this that. This is before YouTube. That's, that's that's even crazier that something like that went viral. So, so yeah. you have – it got divided like people were taking sides. And obviously everyone just did not take Carlos's side. No. They, didn't know, they didn't like him. If anything, that was like a teaching moment of like the ethics of stand-up comedy because all of a sudden you had non-stand-up comedians it's like, he's not a real comedian, <laughs> you know, without even knowing – what a real comedian is to them. You I will. Know? I will say, I just wish that incident was for a better joke. Mm. You know, because that yeah. joke has been done several times. We're like, who's gonna build the wall? Right. But then once that happened, it just snowballed, and it had him uh, doing Bill Cosby's uh, son scoring a touchdown bit. Right. Yeah. Word for word. Right. So instead of saying son, he changes to nephew. So he was clearly not biting like a concept. It was just like he was biting the whole word for word joke. Yeah. 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 And that's well, why it was really bad. Well, we all cross pre premises. We yeah. all have well, yeah, like of parallel thoughts. There's different versions of jokes. But you know? uh, to blatantly steal a, a, yeah. like a personal family what, moment. What was he thinking though? Like I word for you, word. That's, that's, that's what crazy. That was the whole thing with Carlos Mencia that they called him a sociopath. He yeah. doesn't know that he's even doing That's it. That's insane. Like Robin Williams used to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but you know, you know, I, I rest in peace. You know, I love Robin Williams, but apparently he had he had a thing for stealing people's jokes no. without even knowing it, and people would call him out, and then people would just he would just give him a check. Oh wow! Yeah, really? at, at least he gave him a check. Yeah. <laughs> and I know, I know a story. I don't want to say the name. But uh, he called him out in San Francisco, and Robin was like, how much do you want? He goes, I don't want your fucking money. Yeah. Put me in one of your movies. And then right. he put him in one of his that's movies. That's amazing. That, and I that's mean, how it should work. But here's work. the thing. If you can do that, then fucking the joke is yours. <laughs> it's like, if well, you can yeah, do that. It, well, yeah, if you... I mean, because people, you know, with art, that happens in music, and they're songwriters. You know, these are services you pay Sir, for. Music is different. I think it, the problem yeah. with music, there's well, no, a lot of pe sampling. People and, write jokes for scripted comedy, uh, you know. Yes, yes. But that. Are there, there are comedians with one-hour specials that work with writers too, right? Yes, of course. That's a thing, Of right? course, yeah. that's a thing. I mean – I, I know a couple of names. I would never say the names. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying. But it's that such is a, a thing. taboo. Yeah. Looked at Bond thing. Like if I'm, I'm not saying he does it, but if I'm fucking Kevin Hart. Right. Right. This is the perfect example because this dude's the top. Right. Guy right now, one of the top guys. Not just as a comedian though. Like when you look at Chappelle, you just see him as a comedian. Right. Like you never expect anyone writing anyone. Uh, uh, Dave is anyone's writing anything for Dave. Right. 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 You just don't see. That. But with Kevin, he's not just a stand-up anymore. He's a brand. Right. He's a fucking mogul. He's a so he's got like eight movies, mm -hmm. fucking fourteen Nike sneakers coming out right, or right. whatever. Yeah. Like you know, some kind of juice. Yeah. Uh, he's producing his own shows, and he's got his friends that he's producing. Right. You know, so at that point, you're like, whatever, you know, whatever. That's how I look at it. And yeah. To be honest with you. I, I've seen so much comedy. Like, you're not... <laughs> nothing is surprising me. For right. me. Right. So, I look at it as... I mean, you work on your shit. You, I, 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 comedy is like the second place to... I mean, I think rap and comedy have a very similar yes, you write hierarchy your, with OGs to new comedy and the critique that people have on each other. Yeah, it's like why? Because there's a lot of bitter I, rap OGs. I got, I got a, which I get. Yeah, because I'm like that when it comes to comedy. I, I don't care if you have writers. Yeah, I prefer you not to, for myself to watch you. But I understand, and right. I don't have an issue. Uh, there, there's, there's a really huge fucking difference between having a writer or someone to help you punch up. Right. That's people comics do that all the time. They're sitting around fucking rooms talking to each other, like talk. That's how I write. Talking is the best writing for I, me. I've noticed in in rap, like it's more about OGs complaining about how they don't like the new shit and they love the good old days. In well, comedy, it's yeah. not really about that, right? No, no. Comedy's not like. There I like is the good old a, days. They like, there is in a sense because, you know, we're fucking, we always think it's better when we were 
younger. Yeah. And there's a sense of not the good old days. Like, I liked it when it was less politically correct. Right. And all that stuff. And you, don't, don't comedians now, like, don't they write more and do more specials now? You know, like back it's in too the, much. Back in the day, like people would do a special every like couple years. Yeah, it's, but there's people who do a special every year now. Like they're writing more. But they're not. Sense, I don't think right? they're as good as they used to be. Right. right uh, that's right, right. just. That's not. The specials I'm, aren't as good. You're well, saying. it takes. It, yeah. it, you can, <laughs> you can only write so much, without living a life. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. Like what the right. f- you just like? Let's say I record. Uh, later this year. Yeah. This is years yeah. of build up in life. And then I'm going to record another one uh, the following September. Yeah. I, I didn't have time to live a life. Yeah. Like I'm not working. No, you know what? I always, I agree with you because I always tell the homies who are always tweeting or like on social you're media, like, li- I'm in the studio 24 <laughs> hours a day. <laughs> no, like, not. what the fuck you rapping about? That's like, what I'm you saying. know what, what I'm saying? Like, well, why do you think people's first, second albums are always like the best? That's what art is about. It's like 50% living the life and a 50% documenting it on something. That's into, what I'm on, saying. Like, that's why when people go, Are you an actor? Are you like, Reality is, I would love my own television show. Right. Right. I would love because here's the deal. I got I got to fucking get a TV show because I can't be the only fucking Kim of comedy <laughs> <laughs> without a television show. Right. Right. So I would like to develop my own show. Yeah. Show based on my stand up, my personality. Because I I you know I went I've been doing this 18 years. About five six years ago, I went through like a bad breakup. Went through a big drug binge. Yeah. So much drugs. Every yeah. day. Not yeah. just doing... And I started to kind of hate comedy. And then, I I don't know, I just woke up and said, I, I, I need to start making some money. Yeah. I need to get over this. And I got a, I became a better comic because I struggled for a good two years. Mm. Like, no car, no home. Just traveling, doing right. stand-up, uh, doing the podcast. By the way, listen to my podcast. It's the All I'm Say podcast. What is it called? All I'm saying. All I'm saying. All okay. I'm saying is 20 minutes a day, and Monday just through Friday. And I just talk. If you like the way I talk, this is it. With a little more funny, because fucking he isn't. He, he's so fucking stoic. <laughs> I can't tell if anything I'm saying. He's enjoying. He's like, nah, he's I'm just enjoying. Thinking of the next. I'm a little hung over. I get it. I get it. I get it. But, <laughs> but um, anyway. So listen to it, and then uh, if you have something bad to say about me, I don't care. Tweet at me. You I, got. I you got a. You got a really funny voice. Actually. People love the voice. Do you do know? You, how, do you do voiceover stuff? No, but people. I don't know why I don't. But uh, do you know that is the most I'm ever recognized? That's amazing. When I yeah. start talking, yeah, people will go. Oh, I thought you were Kevin, but as soon as you start talking, you it's, could play. It's like, like a, nasally with like an East an Coast an animated muskrat. Yeah, or something. Or something. <laughs> I would love a fucking anima- animated muskrat. Oh my god! But anyway, with the comedy for me, it's a harder. It's a harder path. Right. Really, it's gonna take longer, but I just like doing stand up. I right. love it. I mean, people who see it as a means to an end, which I'm fine with. I'm not that guy. Yeah, I'm a purist in a sense to me. Right, right, right. I don't right. give a shit what you do. Right. Like I, don't, I don't fucking eat onions. Like I don't eat kale. I don't CrossFit. But if you want it, have at it. Right. I'm gonna make fun of you. Yeah. But have at it. So I don't know. That's how I treat stand up. Do you, have you? Do you think you've ever you've changed over the years with the way comedy's changed in in, in any way? Like, I do you have, catch yourself changing or? Oh, you know what? I I, I got to be honest with you. It's good and bad, and right. which annoys me. My pacing has changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, my inflection, my attitude has not. Right. My attitude. The is content. St- the content. You, you still keep yeah, it. You still push it. I yeah. still uh, quote unquote keep it honest whatever right. keep it real whatever the fuck that saying is but more than anything is this is a good i catch myself because i'm aware i'm not a moron i'm yeah. more i'm definitely more self-aware and i find myself <laughs> tell me if you have it happens to you you'll be watching tv or you'll see an answer on twitter by someone in the mainstream media mm-hmm. artist performer whatever and they say something a little off color and I'm like oh <gasps> And yeah. I catch myself going, ew, I can't believe I reacted because society has just pushed this sensitive, victim, political, correct culture on me. But I also am like, that's good. 
because now I know what buttons to push, but then I also know how to stop where so it's not people are just like completely grossed out by right. what I said. So there's always a line, and people, uh, you know, comics go, I hate it now. It's like you shouldn't. This is actually making it easier for you in a sense because you want them to laugh out of uh, like a release, right? Like you almost, they almost are go- gonna look to you now and say something a little off color, right, right? Right? Like, don't be afraid to say mention like in a story like the guy was black. Hmm. Like people, that's a trigger now, which is weird because like I'm just describing right. the people in the story. They're almost like waiting for you to fuck up. A yes, bit. <laughs> they just, want that, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like. It's good in a sense where, like, it should make you tighter. Right. But there's a lot of people who have gotten lazier because I've noticed with comedy now a lot more easy race and uh, gender and gay jokes with themselves. Mm. Not, yeah. not overall work more. Now, right. When I was coming up, you didn't, you couldn't base it everything on your race. Right. Or gender or mm-hmm. sexuality because mm-hmm. it seemed easy. Right. But now a lot more people. It's just more accepting now, right? Because there's so much of it, so much more fucking. It outlets. seems a little bit more hackish, right? Is that what it you're seems? Saying? Uh, it it's, seems a little more watered down. That's just yeah. that's just gonna happen when there's uh, so much comedy, right? And w- uh, which is not a bad thing. I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm all for it if it's done right, for it, sure. It's, it could w- be good. Well, I don't even care if there's bad comedy out right, there now. Right, right. But I want to say that I'm fine with it. But I'm also like, all right, I want to do my own thing, and I don't want to hear anyone fucking uh, bitch about it. Like, I don't like when comics bitch right. about other people's comic, other comics material being too much. Like, right. How the you do not what? Why are you doing this? Yeah, I feel like I feel like you just gotta let nature take its course and just weave people out. You know, if people want to do certain things, if they want to rap or do stand-up comedy, just let them do it. Doesn't yeah. mean they're gonna succeed at it, you know, no, or no. kill it at kill at it. You like, know what I mean? Like, uh, I remember when you first did stand-up, I gave you shit because I was mad that you could rap <laughs> and do right, stand-up. Right, right. It was because you're so fucking likable and talented. I was like. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm done gargling your dick right now, but I was like, this asshole, this ass, because I I can't I can't rap. Like I know what I am. <laughs> like I I'm give it, not give it a try, bro. I have. <laughs> I'm awful. I'm awful. Did you did you rap in high school or anything? No, we used to get drunk uh, in like your forties. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it called a cipher? Yeah, of course. Just- I, well, ex- <laughs> you have to excuse my lack of knowledge. So they would all freestyle, and every time it would come to me, I'd go pass. Just yeah, yeah, pa- and pass. pass. And it pass. was a, it was Carry all on. it was with all the fucking Puerto Rican and black sprinters on the yeah, track yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was me, the cross country distance guy. They it was like pass, <laughs> pass, and I could barely drink. Like when did you start stand up? Actually, I didn't start till late. I started yeah. like two years after I graduated. I started in 2001. Mm. So I it was two years after I graduated college, and I was late. Yeah. Like, most people start in their early 20s. Right. Yeah, I started late. I was like 26, or maybe I was 24. One of right. those, yeah, right. one of those things. But, I mean, it's not about when you start. Com- that's the best thing about comedy. Right. The more older and fucked up and lame you yeah, get. people exploding way later. Like yeah. Louis C.K. didn't blow. Yeah. Oh, I always think Louis grew into his act because he got older, balder, right. and fatter. Right. And when life hit him, yeah. so now he had like more honest shit to talk about. Right, right, right. The crazy chick that I went to jail. Do you know this story? No. <laughs> we were breaking up. Uh, you know how we're, yeah, fights get petty at the end and then I was like give me my phone I bought you that phone and then I took the phone she fucking bit me locked herself in the bathroom with my laptop broke my laptop oh shit she fucking signed, before she broke the laptop she signed up for a shitload of uh, dating sites with uh, fake profiles of me yeah. signed me up for all these online degrees it was actually kind of funny I had to change my number and my email because I was getting so many spam calls oh my god the cops came. I uh, we were like, when cops come, you get sober. Yeah, you're you don't want to fight no more. Two two Mexican dudes, two Mexican cops, and they go, sir. Uh, a lot of men don't call for abuse because they're uh, embarrassed. Yeah, but you know what? We see it all the time, and it's the woman's fault. 
And I was like, yeah, I don't want to press charges or anything like that. Yeah. And, and then the 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 crazy ex was like, no, I don't want to either. But the, when the, that happens, do you know that in the state of California, when there's no clear defined, uh, you know, instigator, you arrest both people. Really? They call it the OJ law. Because the problem is they kept going to OJ's house and no one was ever getting arrested. No. Right, right, right. Yeah. The OJ they law. They call it the OJ Imagine law. Imagine having a fucking law named yeah. after you. So, so you have, someone has to get booked. Yeah. So we're sitting there. We're in fucking handcuffs. That's crazy. I'm in the cop car. She's screaming at me. Just We're handcuffed. Yeah. In the car. She's going, ah, ah. I go, stop yelling at me. <laughs> we're going to jail. Right. We're fucking in jail. We're in the holding cells right next to each other. She's still yelling at me. I go, stop fucking yelling at me. We're in jail. Right? They come up to us like, here's the deal. We have to book one of you. One of you's getting booked. I'm fucked. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fucked. No guy is never not getting booked. They come back two, uh, two, 20 minutes later. They go, Kevin, we're letting you go. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I came out, I, fi- I high-fived the cops. <laughs> I had bite marks, that's why. Oh, why, right, right, that's... That was the last time I saw her. And then I went to a show that night, and I remember, uh, I, I feel bad for getting Kevin's... Fuck, he's a good comic, glasses, white guy with glasses. He's like, what do you want me as an intro? Just tell him that he got out of jail. Just say, Kevin, this guy, he just got out of jail. Let's hear yeah. from Kevin Shea. I did that story on stage. I did a whole background. It killed. Nice. I have never been able to reprise that moment again. That's amazing. That's the fuck thing about comedy sometimes. Right out of fucking jail with right a bite, j- mark bite mark on your Bite mark and it crushed. And then I haven't been able to recreate that moment because it's hard for me to take myself back. Right. It was so easy for you to go into the story. Yeah, then. and it was yeah. right there. And sometimes it's like, ah, I wish I could do it. Like People love the story because it's so crazy. Right, right, right. Well, uh, on that note, uh, the bite mark note, uh, I'm going to wrap up the show, Kevin. Yes. Thank you for pulling up to the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully I get some hits. Yeah, you're welcome to pull up anytime and sit oh. in on other interviews, too, oh, actually. Oh, I would love That'd it. That'd be great. I would love it. We can revisit our K-pop hosting days. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, tune in ep- another episode of Fun With Them next week. Comment below what guests you'd like to see on the show. Peace. Bye. <laughs>